looking for a job as an agile coach or scrum master this year, I know it might feel like it became harder than ever to get this kind of job. And you'll be right, it did become harder. But you've come to the right place, friend. Not only am I a professional agile coach, but I also run a private coaching practice in half of my one-on-one beautiful successful clients happen to be leaders in the agile space and i have a ton of insights to share here with you in this video including a mini guide on getting the most out of your networking skills before applying for a job so because knowledge is power to maximize your ability to get a job in the agile leadership space this year we'll go about the problem the context and the opportunities what is the problem exactly simply put you want a job as an agile coach in 2024 yet so many companies just came from massive layoffs a recession seems to be approaching and you may or may not have one of those agile certifications let's be real the recession is a bummer but the tech layoffs are normal i don't want you to stress over them they sadly happen every now and again, every couple of years, especially for big companies like Google, Microsoft and the likes, and they are not happening because of Agile. So if you want to gain a little bit more insight on this, read my blog post on the subject. I don't have a video, it's just a text, but it's a worthy read. If we move to the context though, there are less job opportunities in general available, but that's not all. Companies got leaner. They're dealing with complexity and speed of change in a way that they've never seen before. And because of that, the state of Agile got elevated. And so did the expectations around the roles of Agile coaches and Scrum Masters. Framework knowledge is not sufficient and hard skills in management because management is a science, as well as in a number of soft skills are now a necessity, way more than certifications, in fact. What you may not have considered, though, is that while highly competitive, the market is full of hidden opportunities. You just need to work differently to get to them. Now we move to what you are thirsty for, the juicy part of this video, let's talk about the opportunities. The opportunities start with a choice. That's right, how cool is that, that even in tougher times, you get to choose your own adventure. The main choice you are faced with is, do you want a job that has the title as Agile Coach or Scrum Master? Or are you content to hold the agile leadership responsibilities one is not better than the other and i won't judge you for your choices but acknowledge that the opportunities are different you must then proceed a little bit differently too so let's jump into my mini guides for each and we'll start with the one if the title of agile coach and scrum master matters to you if you want to become an Agile coach or a Scrum Master, you can either go the consultant route or the internal coach. What's the difference? The consultant, that's what I do. I work as an external coach for different clients and teams from a few days to a few months, maybe even more, sometimes you know longer, different companies. What it means is constant change. You need to be flexible and adaptable because the scenarios, the context is very different in each of those spaces. There is a big market if you have experience because consultants are hired at expert hourly rates. The expectations are high. So it's a great way for you to um, enter the market with the title. The internal agile coach. So there are so many organizations that hire Agile coaches and Scrum Masters as their employees. They just don't have 10 jobs open at once. Also, many of the hiring companies are not the big names you may think of. They are smaller companies that need help in becoming more agile. Many of them not even worry about frameworks whatsoever, which is good news, right? Now, where do you find job positions? Number one, job sites. Indeed, Glassdoor and even LinkedIn. Sure, use those, they work. Just know it's you and everybody else on the planet. Still valid though. And as you go there, notice the name of the companies. 
There are some you may have never heard before. These are naturally the companies not many folks apply to, yet some of them are highly remarkable and specialized in their own domain, which could be a fantastic opportunity for you. Number two, the company websites themselves. If you look down the list of what I just showed you, you see the website of um, the companies themselves. And whenever possible, I think that those are your best bet. You skip the noise of those aggregators and in many times you find the company on LinkedIn only to click apply and just be redirect to the company site anyway. The other cool thing about applying directly in the company's website is that they may allow you to apply even if there's no position open right now. So you can get a call later when you least expect. Number Three is professional associations, and that is crucial, especially if you're going the consultant route. Make the most of your professional associations, whether you're an engineer, someone in health, someone in IT, and some of these are very well known, for example, the PMI, but there are others that are more hidden, like the Aki. Start with the ones that make sense for you professionally. Be a part of them because Yes, they advertise opportunities online open, but sometimes they keep an internal list of jobs in, in gigs and contracts, and it's only for members of the association. The example I can personally give here is the Aki, which is, I'm part of. It is only for consultants, only in IT, and only in Quebec. Very specific. The more specific, the better. You'll be a better fit for the opportunities this way. Number four is career fair and networking. Now, in person, in online career fairs and organic networking are very much alive. Very few people take advantage of this way of creating job opportunities as an agile coach, though. And the reason why they don't, it's because many people have no clue what true networking is. That's why we'll enter a section now in this video with my mini guide on networking. If you'd like me to do a detailed video on working good practices and tips, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to oblige. Mini guide for proper networking. What is networking? Definitely not just bugging people and asking for favors. It's not aimless, small talk either. Networking is a proactive tactic for professional relationship building. So it's not something to do when you're desperate for a job. You have to do it before you need one. Why? Because of the number one rule of networking. Give value before you receive or ask for anything. By the time you want to ask, my friend, you better have given a ton of value. You have to earn your ask. So in the networking 101, first thing, invite your connection in person or online. So just something brief. It has to be 30 minutes or less, 15 to 20 minutes, that's a sweet spot. You have to learn to be economic with time. Then a tip here, if you find it awkward to invite people and to initiate conversations, well, simply do it anyway. That's my tip for you. Consider that a good practice, my friend, because if you want a chance at working as an agile coach or similar, people and interactions must be your second nature. That's directly in your wheelhouse. Then the second piece is be aware that this is a gift. This chat that you're having with people is a gift. They are gifting you the valuable time. It's a scarce resource. So show up on time. I do get people not showing up for sessions they schedule with me. Such a shame. They don't even cancel, not even a word. And then you know what happens next? They go to a not so special place on my list. They wasted my time, plain and simple. They took space on my calendar and yep, I judge and I am not alone. Everybody is judging you. Cause a good impression. Don't be a no-show. Now the next part is, okay, you show up and then what? Well, do your homework about the person, about their company beforehand and have an agenda. What do you want to say to this person? What do you want to gift them with? What are the questions you want to ask? Are you just reconnecting? Is this your first chat with them? 
Or is this the one chat where you're going to ask for opportunities in this call? A good rule of thumb, if such a thing exists, is that you don't ask for a job until you have, let's say, some three or more good interactions with this person. Remember, value first. Bonus tip, learn the person's style so that you can match it. What do I mean by this? Well, if they are direct, be straight to the point. Can you say things in less words? So there you go. If the person is a family person, well, go ahead and ask about their family. Do they love their pet? What's the pet name? So long as you remember it's a human being in front of you and your only job is to connect, it really becomes that simple. I hope that that shows you also how networking can't be like those annoying things that you see happening on LinkedIn. You open your account, you see in the message just some random person just sent you a brief message, say, hey, I'm looking for work, here's my resume. Don't do that. People are not at your service. So that should conclude our mini guide on networking. And now let's jump into what if the title as an agile coach or scrum master really doesn't matter to you. When the specific job title doesn't matter to you, I'll say this, a world of opportunity opens up. Remember a while back when things like agile coach, YouTuber, uh, or social media manager, they didn't exist as a profession, they ended up being invented. And many other professions like director or manager have existed for a long time, but the demands on them have changed. All that to say is that the opportunity is where you are. So in here, my first tip for you will be look for the word manager. It's the easiest way to find interesting jobs, especially if you're looking outside of your current company. Plane manager, line manager, change manager, project manager, they all count. Read the descriptions. They are as varied as they come, which is great news but they are a great bet for you to find your next job where you'll be asked to improve the flow of work to help people adopt change, to negotiate priorities and many more fundamentals of good, simple, agile. My second and final tip in this category is solve a real problem. That's really the final tip and I hope you appreciate it as much as I do. We sometimes look far and wide and ignore what is right in front of us. Well, you know your company, the departments, the problem, you should be networking inside of it all, by the way. If you're looking for the opportunity to lead agile change without scaring people with new roles and new names, that is actually your best bet. It's one of the easiest and the most comfortable options that most people are not doing. Internal opportunities get created, my friend. So long as you're getting curious and noticing what seems to be problems, you can start suggesting ideas to solve it. You should even be as bold as eventually nominate yourself to be the person who goes after certain solutions. Of course, probe and ask before, but be proactive. In fact, entrepreneurship is a big unexplored potential for many employees who wants to drive innovation and change in organizations, yet they don't feel like they want the troubles of running their own company. In conclusion, while the market is very different this year when compared to the early days of the pandemic, opportunities to coach and to support agile in organizations are plenty. I hope you can take an idea or two from this video. If you do, I'd love you to let me know in the comments so that I can cheer you on. With that, my friend, I'm ending this video here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.